Okay, we're going to do another kind of walkthrough. It's not handheld this time, but I'm going to be talking more about this process, which is the knowledge process, and it's part of a greater and more general knowledge loop. Hey, so let's get started. This is our world. Each of us has a world like this, and when we were growing up, our world, what we thought was the world, it was just us, and it seemed like everything, like one dot of everything. As we mature and as we make connections and relationships with our family and friends, we recognize that there are others, but they still seem really close to kind of us. So this is where that loop of knowledge starts. There's encounters that we have and we express ourselves, which then shape the encounters that we have and we get that process. Now over time, we get a little bit more of an individual sense of ourselves. However true or false that is, we start to see a separation between us and the others around us. So what happens if we embrace this is that there's a bigger space between encountering and expressing things. So let's go back to this, and that's where between encounter and expression, we can create a space where we can get thinking in. And so let's go up to see what that looks like. So that's where we have others, this virtuous loop, you, us, and then back to others. We encounter something, we then express ourselves, that expression changes and shapes future encounters, those encounters change us. So this is the knowledge loop, it's based on simple cause and effect, we really can't escape it. And if we're so lucky, when the situation calls for it, we can create a little bit of space between stimulus, I'll hold this up again, between uh, stimulus over here, and response. We can open up a space, and in that space is what we're looking at here, a space to think. And it turns out, especially in the 21st century, thinking is uh, it's valued. We can get a lot out of thinking. Who would have thought, right? Um, so at this point, I want to point out something. There are two processes here. There's the knowledge process, and then on the bottom here, there's the becoming process. Now, for the most part, we're going to stick to talking about the knowledge process, and we'll, st uh, we'll, we'll go further in different videos. So that is the knowledge loop, and it's composed of two different parts. And what's really cool, and hidden within the PCAM planet, the thing that I think was uh, released to the public in a video over a year ago, is this process. It's been there the whole time. So we have inputs, we think about things, and we have outputs. And then we have the stuff that helps drive, drive our future inputs. And again, there's a video that talks all about the PCAM planet, so I won't bore us too much to death here. But what's really fascinating about this is that when we start as a child, this is our world, our planet, it's this dot, it's everything. Then we can break it apart, we can troubleshoot it, we can make a diagnostic breakdown of it, like we'll see later in this video. But in the end, the PCAM planet just becomes your world again. And if we really want to zoom this thing out, your world is the same thing. It's everything. But we're just breaking it down, because if we break it down, we can become better. And that's the idea here, is that once you know how the knowledge process is encoded, that's an acronym, it becomes clear how you can improve yours. So let's break this down into something practical. So before this video is over, you're going to have something practical that you can leave with, some questions that you can ask yourself to see which of these areas you might be able to unstick yourself just a little bit. So now, let's look at that acronym. This is the knowledge process and the becoming process, and it forms the knowledge loop. It is encoded. E is for encounter. Note is for noting things that you come across. Connect is C, O, organize, develop is D, E is express. So that forms the word encode. And then all of that is driven by our final D. Very, a lot of different factors. I will cover that in a different video on the becoming process. So this is encoded. And that is the knowledge loop. The same simple loop. I want to show this one more time. This is the knowledge loop too, right? Information touches us, and then based on that information, 
we react, and then we have new information. That's all it is. That's all this is. The knowledge loop is encoded. And what's cool about that is then we can break it down to really simple language. What happens in the encounter phase of knowledge? We can just say something what we say all the time. Hi. That's it. Hi. Hello. Hello, new idea. Hey, let's have a conversation. Hello, person. Let's have a conversation, whatever it is. And then when you stumble across something with the N note, what does that mean? I'll make note of that. Oh, I'll take a note there. What do we say? We might not say it out loud, but what we're saying is, that's interesting. So in encounter, we say hi, and then in note, we say, that's interesting. Now what typically happens most of the time, we're speeding across, speeding through our days so quickly, we may not have time to really sink our teeth into all of the thinking that we can open up a space for. And sometimes that's fine, but when it becomes this chronic bypass of deep thinking, then we get into this surface level weak thinking, where we kind of atrophy our thinking muscles, and it's not good. So what typically happens there is that we say, hi, that's interesting, I feel. Hi, that's interesting, I feel. And we just don't get any depth from that process. So that is sort of a chronic problem that we're witnessing, I would say in this century, but probably in any, any century. And it's really up to us to open up that space right here and spend a little bit more time in the thinking mode of it all. So the other direction you can go is say, hey, that's interesting, and then connect it. That reminds me. And then you're connecting whatever that conversation is you're having with someone or the article that you're reading, the book that you're reading, and you connect it. You, you say, that reminds me of when I was growing up and my grandma did this, or when I read this other book that had a similar concept, or this experience I had with a friend just recently. You connect it to something, and this is where the sense making really happens. And then you might say, and that's related to, and that's related to, or you might say, and that's part of. And then with that framework, you get to the develop phase and you say, oh wow, that means, and you start to connect things that you never would have connected before when you just skip from that's interesting to I feel. Not to say that we shouldn't do that half the time in our day, but there's another large chunk of time where we can sink a little bit deeper into really important subjects and thoughts. Then we can grow those thoughts over time. Okay, and so this is the top part that we're focused on, which is the knowledge process, and that's part of a bigger, bigger loop that we're talking about. Okay, now I wanna give you questions and prompts that you can take with you for each of the process. This is really a framework, so it's the encoded framework. And what you can do is use it as a framework but now we're kind of going to use it as a diagnostic tool, a self-diagnosis tool to say, hey, where, where am I stuck here? And so here are some of the questions that you can ask yourself. In the encounter phase, where am I encountering information? Where am I encountering information? And you might say, I like that, I don't like that, I can change this, I can't change that right now. Um, ask this question, write about it, think about it. What's the next question? Well. In the note, noting phase, where you note what's interesting, ask yourself, hey, what's signal to me? What is high quality signal to me? What is noise? How am I filtering that difference? And then in the connect phase, hey, that reminds me of, this is, if you take anything away from this, this is the most important prompt, I believe. And then some of the prompts that you can follow here are, Am I sticking new knowledge to existing knowledge? Am I building upon my past knowledge? Two questions there. What about the organized phase? Do I have a place to put things? Am I able to scale my system so my knowledge compounds in value? So these are you know, subjective. It's not like a yes or a no, but you have to really ask yourself these questions. What about the develop phase? This is where I think the least work is done for in our society, for even with knowledge workers, I think the, le the least amount of work, but the most joyful work is in the develop phase. And that's where you start to make these connections because you're connecting ideas, you're organizing. And so really, these are all kind of playing at the same time. 
I, and I haven't said this earlier, this isn't a linear process and it's not a step-by-step -step process. A lot of these are tunes, are instruments, and they're playing in harmony with each other. So when we're developing things, it's typically because we're organizing them, and that's typically because we're organizing them by maybe connecting them in certain ways. So ask yourself, am I making leaps of insights? Am I seeing the patterns? Am I colliding ideas? And am I enjoying this? That's a big one. What about express? Okay, so where? Where am I able to express myself? Where are you doing that? Are you at all? Are you stuck? Are you, am I emotionally constipated? If I share my thoughts, will they be treated with respect? That's an important one. And if that is an issue where you're stuck, it's going to be really difficult to want to do any other aspect of this. So any of these areas are things that if you get stuck, you're not completing a healthy knowledge loop. But what's empowering is all you have to do is figure out how to get unstuck and work on that area. Typically, I'll find that it's in, well, knowing what's signal, knowing what's noise, not capturing everything, but then really spending time here in the, sen in the land of sense making, truly. Last thing I want to show is that this whole thing is a diagnostic tool with exercises. So the knowledge loop is what we're looking at here. This is, you can't see my hands, but this is the knowledge loop. We're just moving around the loop. And we wanna really focus on this framework called the encoded framework. We can ask our questions, which is then when we use it as a diagnostic tool, but we can take it further and leave with practical exercises with each stage of the encoded framework. And that's where I think this is kind of powerful. For one, I mean, the loop is happening, whether they're my terms or somebody else's. So the loop is happening. We just want to make sure that we can feel in charge of it so that we're on top of the world and the world is not on top of us. So what does that look like? Well, there's an exercise for each of these. I left a couple of these kind of hidden, but the ones that I want to point out is creating a spark list. So you can recognize those things that resonate with you. That's like pop. You just know, oh, I love that. And that you, you light up when there's somebody mentioning something related to that thing. So one of the exercises that we're doing in the upcoming workshop is creating the spark list. The bread and butter of linking your thinking truly is this exercise, which is all about the seven C's of note making. And that's a process that um, I want more people to be aware of. But in due time, then, to continue the note making, there are the 11 C's of map making. So this is really what next level linked based digital notes allows us to do. We, um, there are unintended consequences and these are kind of hard to talk about until you feel comf comfortable with linking knowledge and you can do it fast enough. But when you get, when you become comfortable enough and you become fast enough, what happens is we really break the sound barrier. And we, get closer to being able to work at the speed of thought. And when that happens, when you can get through Mach 1 and you get close to the speed of thought, this activity of map making is not only organizing, you're developing, you're th really thinking at another level, at that higher level, but you're, it's, huh, I can't, I, I can't give it justice right now, but uh, it's pretty exciting. And then there are other exercises. I won't talk about the home note or a couple of the M's of outputs. Um, some of this stuff is for later, but there is a process here. So the goal when you leave this video is that you ask yourself these questions. Where are you stuck in the knowledge loop? Then diagnose yourself and spend a little bit more time. If it is in develop, then just zoom in on these questions and make it happen here. Zoom in on these questions, spend some time to answer those questions as best as you can. Then your loop will be a little bit smoother. The better that you can go through this loop, the better insights that you'll have, the more confidence that you'll have with the new ideas that you encounter. You'll feel more comfortable with how you express them. And I think it'll gain you, give you clarity uh, and a process that you can rely on. So I guess I'm curious, do you want another video like this? We started with this, an actual hand drawing and then we took a little bit further with this version and we we really focused on the knowledge process which is at the top 
of the knowledge loop. There's also there's also the becoming process. Do you want me to talk about that? I don't know. If you if you do, let me know in the comments below. More so, I'm even more curious which of these questions, which of these prompts are the most empowering for you? Your feedback is really helpful. So really appreciate that. Hopefully you got a, a lot out of this and I will see you on the other side.